What's going on ladies and gentlemen? AJ Gore here and I'm back with another video. This time we're taking the new Valiant Eagle Baycaster. Now granted there's a lot of different Valiant Eagles in the spinning reel world but this is the first of the Valiant Eagle Baycasters. This is a pretty cool setup. I'm going to give you a quick description and show you guys how I set it up with three different lures to help your experience with the Valiant Eagle be just that of a great one. All right, here it is, guys, the new Valiant Eagle Baitcaster. Guys, this is a beautiful setup, black on gold accents, beautiful, beautiful aluminum CNC machine handler. You got kind of the wing of an eagle in there. Uh, you got the EVA comfort grip. Now, this is a little bit fatter, larger EVA grip than some of the more traditional casking EVA setups. Full graphite chassis and side plates on this. You do have the swing wing design on this one with an eight button magnetic braking system plus a quadruple 17.5 carbon fiber drag. Now, this is a stainless steel shielded seven plus one uh, ball bearing, so this is gonna be good for both freshwater and saltwater conditions. Now, like I said, this being a graphite based reel, you got a graphite chassis as well as graphite side plates. That's making it a very low profile, very compact reel, and one of the lightest reels we've ever produced in the Cast King lineup. Now, one thing that's really cool, not only does it have the swing wing design like we've seen uh, in some of the more elite reels of say like the Royal Legend Elite and the Bassinator. Now remember that name, the Bassinator. This is coming in with two different gear ratios like the Bassinator. As we've seen in the Bassinator Ninja in a 6.6 six to 1 or in the Bassinator Classic where it's available also in the 6.6 six to 1 but also an 8.1 to 1. Now the Valiant Eagle Baitcaster profiles both those ratios, 6.6 six to 1 or as I have here today in a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Let's go ahead and tie a lure on and let's get to fishing and going over how I set this reel up for those actions. Okay, so the lure that we're gonna go ahead and use on the Valiant Eagle Baitcaster, I'm running 12 pound fluorocarbon and we're gonna go with kind of a light setup. We've got an, off, an offset shank hook here, about a three-aught, and I'm gonna be using a uh, paddle tail uh, lure here, gonna go weightless swim bait. Uh, and that's kind of a light setup from Stillwater Bait Company. So I'm gonna show you guys how to tie it up real quick and how to rig up for something this light. All right, so we've got our paddle tail swim bait tied on. And like I said, this is a weightless setup, 12 pound fluoro. This is a very light setup. A lot of different things can affect your setups like wind, rod action, weight of the lure. And we're gonna kind of dive into that a little bit. But your basic setup's what's more important. We wanna watch our rate of fall. And as you can see, we had a fast rate of fall and look at the overrun right there. So we wanna adjust for that and get our rate of fall right at the beginning corrected. This is something you don't want. Okay, so we wanna do our rate of fall. Now we're gonna go ahead and reel up a little high, take your tension knob and tighten it down to where it starts to feel pretty snug, right? That's getting snug there. So I click it, as you notice, I still have somewhat of a good rate of fall. That was good actually. So, but what a lot of times what you're looking for, let's go a little tighter just for the sake of the video. If you start off and it doesn't really fall much, let's get it to where it doesn't fall. Then you can slowly back it off. So go ahead and tighten your tension knob up. And then with this rate of fall, click your button and you see how it's not falling. You can slowly start to back it off till you get that slow rate of fall. That to me is a little too slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my button, but hold the spool, back it off a little more. That's still a little slow, but good for the example. We can back it off as we go. Now our brakes, we wanna go ahead and start off with them really high. We get a little bit of breeze picking up right now, that's gonna affect the way this thing casts, especially if you're casting directly into the wind. If you're casting with the wind, a lot of times it'll cast out farther and you can have a little bit more spool control. Casting into the wind, your lower or your lure is hitting that um, kind of a roadblock in a way of wind and slowing it down. It's facing resistance basically, and it'll slow your lure up, but maybe not slow your line as much, which can lead to backlash. So all those things play a role. So here's the wind, uh, it's blowing into us. So I'm gonna cast with the wind with this setup. Fair amount of tension on my uh, tension knob, and a lot of your runoff starts at the beginning of the cast. So if your runoff starts at the beginning of the cast, that is affected directly by your tension knob. Now, if your runoff starts to happen towards the end of the cast or the deceleration or the arch into the water as your lure is about to enter the water, that is adjusted through your brakes. So fair amount of tension to beginning, high amount of brakes. I'm running up around a seven or an eight right now on my brake adjustment. You can go higher if you like, you can go a little less. I recommend starting off higher and backing it down. So let's give this a cast. 
So that wasn't bad. That's not a bad cast there, uh, especially with such a light setup being a weightless paddle tail. And with this weightless paddle tail, I'm just gonna cruise it to where I'm barely, barely right at the surface of the water. Maybe even bring it up to where that paddle tail makes a slight wake. So I'm gonna try to get out there a little farther. So I'm gonna take a little bit of tension off and I'm gonna take a little bit less breaks here. And I went about three clicks on that one. So I went from about an eight and a half down to a solid six. Now, as you can see with just that adjustment, a big change. I went off a fair amount on my tension knob and a fair amount on my brakes and you can see with this weightless setup uh, it affected it quite a bit so I can see I need to tighten up a little bit. So I'm going to tighten my uh, tension because I noticed it started to happen at the tension side but not bad but it definitely happened towards my brakes. So I'm barely going to tighten my tension up but give myself probably another click and a half to two clicks on my brakes. So let's fix this run over and get our adjustment. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten our tension knob back up a little bit, and I'm gonna go back to about a seven and a half, where I was at eight and a half, now I'm seven and a half. So I'm still wanting to get a little bit further out there in my cast, uh, but I don't want the runoff. So, third cast. Getting pretty good, and getting pretty fair amount of length out there. Now, I noticed in the beginning of my cast, right at the end, was great I had total spool control didn't have to use my thumb at all but I had a slight bit of runoff right at the beginning of the cast so I'm gonna add a little bit of tension again all your runoff that happens at the beginning is off your tension knob runoff towards the end is in your brakes gonna add one click to the brakes on that cast and again like I said a lot of different variables can affect it from the way you sling it the load up of the rod as opposed to right now, I have a slight breeze picking up and down. But once you find those increments to where you can control it, then you can actually use your thumb to pick up the slack on the adjustments and do the rest. So you can keep getting further and further casts. So right there is thumb control with a great cast. And with such a light lure, I'm not expecting to throw this thing 150 yards. <laughs> you can, you can get a lot longer yardage out of them but again, you can achieve those things with lighter line as well. Maybe 10 pound fluoro or things to that nature. All right, so we're gonna give ourselves plenty of line. And now we're gonna switch lures and go on to one of my favorites, a jerk bait. So we're gonna get it tied up and we're gonna dial it in and I'm gonna go over the basic setups again. All right, so now we just went from a weightless setup to a little bit of a heavier bait, uh, different action, 12 pound fluoro. Uh, this guy's gonna have it's a decent rate of fall. I actually kind of like that. I really don't have to mess with it much. That's pretty decent to start. Fix our hooks. Now, remember, uh, in this scenario, if this was something that you'd be doing in real life, you're going from a very light reel or a light uh, lure setup, I should say, sorry. Uh, you're going from a light lure to a heavier lure. Uh, we had our brakes pretty high on that lighter lure. Well, in this one, we may not have to have it set up as much because of the weight of the, uh, of the lure is going to help keep that line feeding uh, and control that line. So I'm actually going to drop it down to where I believe about an eight and a half to start. Wouldn't hurt, especially for uh, somebody not as advanced or, or a beginner or whatever your story may be, to still keep it high and back it off as you go. But I'm gonna start off with an eight and a half, which in my opinion is still really high. So let's go ahead and give that a cast. So I did a slight, slight little bit of thumb control. I could see that this lure really got out there fast, slingshotted, my tension was perfect about where I had it. I could probably keep the brakes right where they're at and continue to use my thumb. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself actually a half a click more brakes because I loved the way the tension was set up but I had the slightest little bit, slightest little bit of line starting to feed off with my thumb in control so it didn't get out of hand, it wasn't a problem, but I'm trying to dial it in where I don't have to use my thumb as much. In my opinion, realistically, normal conditions, I would leave it and use my thumb to compensate, but I'm trying to dial it in perfect. So pretty much right there, that half an adjustment gave me perfect setup with my thumb control 
and I am confident that I can now work this jerk bait in a lot of the conditions that I'm going to see today. Very quick, very easy to adjust. And once you understand that your runoffs at the beginning of the cast start with your tension, towards the end is going to be with your brakes. Once you understand how that operates in your setup of a reel, you can apply this concept with any bait caster on the market. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of this jerk bait. And I'm gonna tie on our third lure, plenty of line. And we're gonna go with a deeper dial, deeper dial. We're gonna go with a deeper diving crankbait. Again, polymer knot, gonna run it through, set it up and drag it across. All right, so we've got it set up. We've got our deep dive and crankbait on there. Let's look at our rate of fall a lot faster, okay? So we just changed different lure weight, different action. We're gonna advance our tension, gonna add more tension, slower rate of fall as we can see. And then of course our brakes are still pretty heavy from that jerk bait. I liked a heavier braking setup on that jerk bait with this application. So I'm rocking about, a, uh, about an eight from a one to 10 level. Eight is being very high, over three quarters or right around three quarter adjustment on uh, the amount of braking power we can use. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a try. Beautiful, no thumb towards the end of that runoff or towards the end of that cast, no runoff, no thumb action, works very well for us. Now we can go ahead and start to back off our adjustment and see if we can get some more length out of that. All right, so I liked my tension I'm gonna go ahead and back my brakes off a little bit and give that a try. Great control the whole way through, zero thumb action used, and got a good amount of distance out of that cast. I might try to loosen my tension and my brakes up even more. The more uh, line you can get out, the farther you can cast your lure, the more amount of water you can cover with the better chances of hooking up on a fish. Lighten my tension up just a little bit and go down to now I'm at about a solid six where I started off around eight, eight and a half. So I got a little bit of runoff at the beginning, not bad towards the end there. Might tighten my tension up just a hair. And this can take two or three casts to decide whether you want to correct that adjustment or if it was just the way you actually cast it, or like in this case, the wind started blowing. That could change it. That could be the variable. So I'm gonna cast it again with no adjustment. Wasn't bad. I'm gonna cast a third time to see if I like it. Yeah, loved it. So right there at the beginning, three casts ago, I contemplating adjusting again, but it could have been some of those variables I talked about. So I gave myself two more casts to see if I liked it, if I needed to change it, or if it was just, I may have made a mistake in some of the ways that I loaded the rod up, the wind, or some of the other variables you can experience. So with that third cast that I did without making any adjustments, I had two of those casts that I really liked. The first one, I faced a slight anomaly, but with the last two casts, let me think, I actually like the setup and I think I'm gonna leave it. Definitely like it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the Valiant Eagle Baitcaster, pretty much narrowed down to a nutshell to help you with the understanding of how it operates, some of its characteristics, and how to adjust it easily with three different lures. Hopefully this video helped break it down in your understanding of how a baitcaster works and how the Valiant Eagle operates. Guys, you can pick these reels up on amazon.com or on casking.com and you can see me AJ Gore in my next video right here on Cast King's YouTube channel. I'll see you guys on the water.